In this video, we're going to talk about a simple yet effective upper body workout for muscle mass and strength that can be done at home or at the gym. Just like with last week's lower body video, we will talk about the exercises, what muscle groups are targeted by each of the exercises, sets and reps for each exercise, and we'll talk about equipment substitutions and DIY equipment since not everyone's equipment availability will be the same. But before we get into the video, hi, my name is Ryan Treadway, founder of treadawaytraining.com, where we turn skinny guys into jacked men. If you want more information on body transforming training and nutrition topics every Sunday, consider subscribing. Start off each of your workouts with your primary exercises, which are your bigger, heavier, more complex exercises. You'll wanna do those while you're fresh. In this workout, we're gonna start off with the bench press. Bench press targets the chest, anterior delts, and triceps. The barbell bench is king, but not everyone has access to a barbell. So some alternatives to this exercise are the dumbbell bench, weighted push-ups, or resistance band chest press. You could even use something like one gallon water jugs to start with for any of the exercises in this video, but you will eventually need to purchase some equipment if you want to be able to continue going up in weight. Getting into the reps and sets, I like to start off my primary exercises with a top set. If you have strength specific goals but are working in a higher rep range for a period of time, you can include a single heavy weight low rep set at the beginning of each of your workouts to keep your body accustomed to handling those heavy loads. After that, move on to the working sets for your primary exercise. There are three basic progressions that you can follow depending on your level of advancement, and all three of these will work great with all of the exercises that we're gonna talk about in this video. I actually explained these progressions in last week's video, and it went something like, this. Single progression is the first one and works really well for beginners. First, pick a rep target. I like to have my clients start with three sets of 10. Each week, keep the sets and the reps the same and increase the weight. For example, week one, three sets of 10 with 100 pounds. Week two, three sets of 10 with 105 pounds. Week three, three sets of 10 with 110 pounds. Week four, three sets of 10 with 115 pounds. So on and so forth until you can no longer go up in weight while still maintaining the same number of reps and sets. Once you reach this point, you can move on to double progression. Now the weight and the reps are changing, hence double progression. For example, week one, three sets of eight with 115 pounds. Week two, three sets of nine with 115 pounds. Week three, three sets of 10 with 115 pounds. Reset the reps and add weight on week four. Week four, three sets of eight with 120 pounds. It's a little bit easier to continue to progress because you're only going up in weight every four weeks rather than every week. But eventually even double progression will be too difficult and you'll need to move on to triple progression, which is where you're changing all three of the variables. For example, week one, two sets of eight with 200 pounds. Week two, two sets of nine with 200 pounds. Week three, two sets of 10 with 200 pounds. Reset reps and add a set on week four. Week four, three sets of eight with 200 pounds. Week five, three sets of nine with 200 pounds. Week six, three sets of 10 with 200 pounds. Reset reps and sets on week seven and add weight. Week seven, two sets of eight with 205 pounds. The next exercise is a vertical pull. For this workout, we'll use the neutral grip lat pull down. Vertical pulling exercises target the lats, traps, rear delts, and biceps. Depending on the grip you use, you can choose which of those muscles receives the primary emphasis. If you want to know more about which grips target which areas of the back, watch this video. 
Most people don't have cables at home for pull downs, so some alternatives are resistance band lat pull downs, weighted pull ups with dumbbells, weighted pull ups with a weight vest, or if you don't have a pull up bar, you could do some dumbbell pullovers or barbell pullovers. I superset vertical pulling exercises with a vertical push. A favorite of mine lately has been the seated Viking press. The Viking press is a very unique exercise that does an excellent job of targeting the clavicular head of the pec. It also targets the anterior delts and the triceps. If you don't have a Viking press handle, you can achieve a similar effect with the jammer press. If you don't have a barbell available at all for landmine presses, you can do resistance band shoulder presses or dumbbell shoulder presses. Next are the secondary exercises. Easy bar curls for biceps, tricep pushdowns for triceps, low incline reverse dumbbell fly for rear delts, and lateral raises for lateral delts. Each of these exercises could be performed with cables, a bar, dumbbells, or bands. I like to do secondary exercises in a circuit. Supersets and circuits are an excellent way to shave some time off of the length of your workouts, but you have to be careful when using them. There are two rules that I have for supersets and circuits, which I also shared in the last video. Rule number one, don't pair primary exercises. Exercises like the squat, bench, and deadlift are globally fatiguing. And if you pair these big heavy primary exercises together, you're gonna get less benefit out of each exercise because of how tiring each of those exercises are. Additionally, if you start a primary exercise while already fatigued, you'll increase the risk of injury because it will be more difficult to maintain proper form. Rule number two, don't pair the same muscle groups. If you pair two or more exercises of the same or similar muscle groups, you'll get less benefit out of each consecutive exercise because you'll be tired from the exercise that came before it. For example, if you pair something like bicep curls and rows, the smaller, weaker bicep muscles are gonna be fatigued from doing the curls. So when you do the rows, it's going to limit the amount of weight that you can use. Therefore, your bigger, stronger back muscles are going to be limited by the fatigued biceps. Only pair exercises for muscle groups that oppose each other, like in the lat pull down Viking press example from earlier or exercises that are completely unrelated, which is what I did in the circuit earlier in the video where I paired biceps, triceps, rear delts, and lateral delts. If you're interested in a leg and ab workout, click here. If you're interested in working with me, click here. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you next week. Most people don't have cables at home for most people don't have cables at home for pull downs, so some alternatives for the lat pull down. Most people don't have cables available at home for pull downs, so some alternatives are.